All right. So this is mm, what to say. This is something that I never thought I'd ever do ever, um, and I'm gonna sh tell why. So my name's John. Hi. Um, I am an adult. <laughs> I'm not gonna give my age out. And up until about four years ago, I was. I was a pretty big atheist, a huge atheist, um, for many years, not just for a while. Like I'm talking like multiple decades, um, and now I'm not. And some people may see this and be like, "Oh well, he was brainwashed," or blah blah blah. They got that's not what happened at all. All right, like our minds have a way of taking some things and trying to put them in terms to where we can understand. So. I can understand why people might go that route, but that's not what happened, all right? So I'm going to try to make this not so much quick because there's no easy way to say this, like especially in this day and age where it seems more and more where people are being attacked more and more and their beliefs are being questioned and all these things and people believe all of us, not all of a sudden, but people believe now that you know God's not real, God's not working. I was one of those people for a very long time. Um, I did a lot of, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was not a very nice person um, as an atheist, especially to people who were Christian, Christian specifically. Um, I would come after people and not attack them physically, but I would, it was spiritual warfare, but I didn't know what spiritual warfare was because I was an atheist. So I would attack their beliefs. I would find scriptures that, you know, I felt disproved their logic, their theology, uh, I felt like it might, you know, contradict what they said. And, you know, I thought that I was doing the right thing. I, and I would snap them out of it. You know, I'm like, they're just stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. Like, how can you believe in this imaginary God? That doesn't make any sense. He's not Santa Claus, right? And, um, yeah, so I had a lot of resentment towards Christians in general. And a lot of other things, you know, going on that, you know, I wasn't fully aware of at the time, but now I'm more aware because God stepped in and showed me, you know, a lot about myself. And I would just challenge anybody who's wondering what it's like to experience God. If you're ever wondering and you really want to know what it's like, you can go through and read the Bible and you can see every encounter that people had with Jesus, but also with God himself in the Old Testament. You can see that those people were changed, right? Like you could see that they had joy, they had relief almost like oh my god like what is what is really going on in this life um every time somebody was healed um and even peter by the way i forgot about that so like even peter you know he he actually um you know spoke the words like he he gave somebody the the healing to actually stand who was crippled you know um i forget the scripture right off the top of my head but yeah you know he said you know gold and silver is not needed here so you know, I'll give you this. And he said, hey, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I, I tell you to stand. And, you know, the crippled guy stands up and he's healed too. So, and from that day forward, like his life changed. And when I was an atheist, I never thought something like that could ever happen to me, right? Like I didn't go to church. In fact, like anytime somebody said that I should go to church, like, cause you know, I know everybody's ran into like Christian friends or maybe family members are Christian. And they're like, oh, you should come to church for this event or whatever. I'm like, I'm not going to that. You're stupid. Like, why would I go to that, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm stressing this because, like, I'm not being sarcastic or overselling this. Like, I was atheist. Like, I was all about, like, philosophy and psychology. Like, I wanted to do something with psychology for a really long time. I was like, yo, I, I, I want to help people with their minds and things like that. Because, you know, I struggled with depression for a really long time and, like, all these thoughts and all these things, like I was constantly feeling these thoughts of worthlessness, of self-loathing, uh, of like the weight of the world, but in a in a way that it was personalized, you know, like it was always attacking me, always, always, always attacking me, and I didn't know what it was. So I took antidepressants for a while, you know, I did drugs for a while to try to escape all of that. Um, you know, I luckily I didn't I didn't get caught up in the drug stuff or whatever, like. Um, you know, I did weed, I did a few things a little bit harsher than weed, but never, never like, I, you know, I never did heroin or crystal meth or anything like that, or ecstasy, although I've had plenty of opportunities for that, but 
you know, I always tried to be recreational with drug use and things like that. But at the end of the day, like, I was always looking for some escape, right? Like, some something to make me forget about how I felt about my life. Um, and, you know, I definitely experimented with, you know, sexual encounters with females. Like, I didn't even care about relationships at the time. It was just about, like, yo, like, if you can make me forget about how I feel for you know, however long, then okay, sure. Um, it was a self-gratification that I was really after. Like, I didn't care about helping anybody. Um, like, when it came to females, like, I didn't really care if they liked me, in all honesty. It was just about, like, yo, does she like me enough to sleep with me, right? Like, and then I don't really need to talk to her after that. Um, and I'm not, I'm not joking about this either. Um, I'm older now, so I can, like, be real about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, that's one of the things, when you're younger, it's, it's cool or whatever, but you're that's a different story but you're basically practicing to how to hurt people and how to not care so that's why it's really not that cool so yeah so how did all this happen so first of all i want to say straight up like i got to say that it was god it, god stepped in and you know i had been following for a really really long time in my life like i had joined the military like it started off all right, and then it, it didn't go very well. Like, uh, it was very bad. Like, I got caught up in drinking. You know, you can't do drugs in the military, so drinking became a thing. And I was all, even before I went into the military as a big drinker, but when I was in the military, like, I became a huge drinker, like, huge. Like, I would, I remember uh, there for a little while, I would waste, and this was an on-base bar, by the way. Like, it's not like I was going to, like, fancy places and, like, drinking. I remember it was, like, probably three months straight while we were in port in California where I would blow anywhere between 200 and 300 dollars on myself in one day um, just on alcohol just on alcohol just on me and you might be saying how is that possible well when you're when you have a really serious problem you can do things like that and um, you know and it's not like alcohol is a cheap drug so yeah I remember one time like we got paid um, we got paid on a Friday, and I went to the bar that Friday night, got drunk, got hammered, whatever. Didn't really burn that much, but Saturday, Saturday we were off, and I knew for certain I was going there, and I'm getting hammered. So I woke up nice and early, of course, because we're military, and as soon as I played, I would actually, like, I would actually schedule my whole time, like, waking up. So, like, if the bar doesn't open up until 9, like, I'm not getting up till 8.35, right? And then, then I'll go to the bar, right? So yeah, that's what I did, and I ended up spending all the day, all day there, almost every weekend, every Saturday, Sunday, I was there, um, and all day there. So I would end up wasting basically my whole paycheck at <laughs> at a base bar, um, on base bar, and it's not like I was talking to anybody either. Like they had TVs there, but I mean, pfft, yeah, whatever. I was there for the alcohol, right? So just to put it in perspective, like what type of person I was um, before, so. In all that time, I, I, I depression got really bad for me for a really long time. I was very, very depressed. Didn't talk to anybody about it, though. But, you know, I, I used alcohol as a way to escape. And, um, yeah, then it was time for me to get out the Navy, came back, still had a huge drinking habit. You know, I, luckily, you know, I'm, I may be like an argumentative person when I'm, when I'm drunk but and an asshole right but I, luckily I, I wasn't violent you know what I mean I, I, I'd be the type of guy that would want you to beat me up not so much I want to beat you up because it was like one of those like self-loathing things but if you stuck around this long we're getting to it all right we're getting to it this is like years in the making so like I, I actually skipped the early years of the atheist journey where I was like 16 or whatever where I gave up on God but um, you know, there was a thought in the back of my mind when I was a kid, like, you know, maybe this God thing is real, you know, going and, you know, dabbling in church a little bit, but little by little, as I like learned more, uh, especially more about philosophy and things like that, the more I just challenged, like, you know, is this God thing even real? Shouldn't we be able to prove it? Otherwise it's a fallacy, right? Like, but you know, that's just one of the things about philosophy where, uh, it, it's kind of a lie, and I'm going to get to that now. So when I got out of the military, I started going to you know, college or whatever, GI Bill, woo, and uh, took a philosophy class, and this is when I really saw that philosophy was bullshit. Not, not always, but at the heart of it, it's bullshit. And 
I could say for the same thing for a lot of the science things. So I'm in this philosopher philosophy class and like like I said I wasn't I wasn't a, a Christian or anything I was atheist so I was on board the philosophy train but this teacher or instructor whatever you want to call him he like made this we were studying studying like really old um, really old logic statements that you know philosophers had took on and we got to this question about God or whatever and like um, the way he said these things, like, it was just so, like, arrogant that I was just like, dude, like, if it's right, why are you saying it like this? It doesn't make any sense. So it was this quote, it was this old, like, statement from some priest back in the day, like, I didn't even, so it, basically the priest was trying to, like, talk to people, and he said, like, that which is greater than, than that could be thought is greater than what could be thought. And my instructor said that because the person defined something with itself it makes it false automatically right like you can't define something with it with itself so you can't be like oh since this is white this is white um which on the surface yes but that's not what actually that person with that um priest was saying he was actually saying because the idea of god is greater than what we can actually fathom like that means that god itself can't actually be brought down to our level of understanding um, like he might share like glimpses of who he is. Um, but um, anyway, I, I called the teacher out on that. I'm like the instructor out. I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. Like that doesn't make any sense. You know? And I said something similar to this and he's like, well, you know, it, if God is supposed to be, you know, the three values of God, like infallible and everywhere, omnipotent and all these things, he's like, well, you know, can God make something that he can't lift? And I'm like, well, that question in itself is stupid because you're saying that God somehow recognizes man-made units of measurement. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, we, we recognize weight. Like, would God recognize weight? So when I said that, this is when the teacher shut me down. He said, he said, look, don't worry about it, all right? You don't need to worry about that. Just know that because these three things, you know, can't be proven that it contradicts God. And I'm like, what? I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. So anyway, that's where I dropped that class after that day. I was like, this dude is a f fucking idiot. I'm sorry for Christian. I am Christian, but like, that's what I thought in that moment. Um, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I still curse sometimes. Um, so yeah, that was kind of where I started really questioning philosophy, but because I had used it for a long time, like I was studying Nietzsche and things like that, thinking that maybe, you know, he had the answers. Obviously, you know, like Nietzsche is not... <laughs> You know, he's not what I thought he was anyway. But anyway, I digress. So struggled for a really long time after the military. And then, uh, and if you're watching this far, hey, grats. I've probably been talking for how long? I don't know. At least longer than 10 minutes. I know that. And this isn't because I'm trying to fish for views or anything like that. I just want people to know, anybody to know out there, you know, if you happen to stumble upon this video, then I'm going to say straight up, it's not an accident. Um, it's not a coincidence. Like, I don't have any subscribers or viewers or ads or anything like that. So if you're watching this, then there's a reason for it. So anyway, yeah, I struggled for a really long time after I got out of the military. Still drinking. Still, eventually, I just said, like, ah, the college thing isn't for me. I feel too old for it, which, yeah. Um, anyway, got a job eventually. Did really, really well at that job, you know, because I did some other jobs that I didn't really like. So I was like, yo, I really want to keep this job. So I worked really hard, like right off the bat. Um, got promoted to be a trainer, like after six months, which is usually it's like five years that you have to be there to actually be a trainer. I think now it's only eight months. But when I was, when I did it, like basically like people were hating on me. They're like, dude, like, I had to wait three years. I had to wait five years. Like, they were all mad at me. So I was a trainer, right? So lo and behold, like, literally, maybe my second group of training, right? This guy befriends me, and we start talking about a lot of things and hanging out and everything. <laughs> talking about just, you know, worldly stuff or whatever. And, um, you know, we didn't really ever talk about God. I had no idea the guy was even Christian, in all honesty. But, you know, I would always... You know, because I was such a sad person at that time, like, I would always pepper things in, like, like, uh, you know, they're like, hey, how's your, how's life, or something like that, and, like, there's this quote in Kingpin where the guy's like, oh, it's taking forever, like, I would always say that, or whatever, like, if somebody asked me how's life, I'd be like, oh, it's taking forever, or I'd be like, it sucks, I'm miserable, you know, um, 
I'm not joking either. Um, that's what I used to say and feel at the time. So, um, yeah, like, I feel like that was maybe one of the reasons why he befriended me. Because, like, maybe it was a pity thing or something. But at the same time, like, I feel like God was definitely using him um, to, for his use. I don't know. Like, I don't really know how to describe it anyway. We started talking about philosophy one day. Like, um, he asked me what other stuff was I into when I was in school and everything. And I'm like, well, psychology, philosophy. He's like, philosophy, really? And I'm like, yeah. He, I guess he was dabbling in philosophy a little bit also, right? So we started talking about philosophy and Nietzsche and um, all these other things. And you know how philosophy goes. It's only a matter of time before you actually get to God, right? I mean, that's one of the things about philosophy. Same thing with religion and science in general. Like, it, no matter how hard you try, like, you're always going to get to a point where you have to talk about God. And I feel like that's actually by design. Like, our hearts and our minds are drawn to this thing. And... You know, we might have used a different medium to get to there at that point. But, yeah, um, so yeah, we start talking about philosophy and all these things. And little by little, I'm just like, dude, like, shut up about God. Like, like I said, this is atheist back then. I'm like, and this was only like four years ago. So I'm not like exaggerating this. So I'm like, dude, shut up about God. Like, I'm not going to hang out with you anymore if you keep talking about God. Like, you're always ruining the mood with this God stuff. Like, because we were just like, we would hang out and talk. Like, I'm not gay or anything like that. He's not either. Like, it wasn't it wasn't like that. It was just like buddies, you know? And uh, I'm like, dude, like, you know, like, shut up with this God stuff. I think we were playing WoW one night. And, like, he said something. I'm like, dude, like... I'm like, dude, your God is stupid. It's a lie. It's made up. It's make-believe, all these things. And I just, like, went in on him on this rant about how fake God is, right? And um, he got pretty upset or whatever. And uh, and next day, though, we talked, and he was like, yeah, no, it's cool. Anyway, so we go to this bar on a Saturday night after work or whatever. And uh, I had already been drinking a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Saturdays were reserved for alcohol. That was my church. And... Uh, and yeah, so we go out, whatever, we're drinking there. And literally like five minutes go by and this dude starts talking about God to me. I'm like, bro, we just got our drinks, bro. Like, why are you hitting me with this God stuff? Like, like if God were real, then blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, honestly, I, I, I kind of I stopped paying attention to him for a little bit. Like I was more focused on my drink. So, you know, I'm listening to him, like, ramble about God. I'm like, whatever, dude. Drinking my beer, getting my drink on. And, uh, yeah, so I would say, like, maybe two or three drinks go by. And, like, somehow he's still talking or asking me questions about God. He starts sharing stories about, you know, the Bible and Jesus and all these things. And I'm just like, oh, God, I wish he would shut up. Like, maybe I should have just left. Like, why didn't I just leave? And, I, I mean, we were also talking about other things, too. Like, we were talking about, like, you know, friendship, relationships with females and things like that. Like, you know, I, I'm not good with women, just, you know, like I said, like in my in my uh, early days, I didn't treat women very well, like like not abusive or anything like that. Just like I treated them more like objects and waste of time. Like it, they were the purpose for a woman back then for me was just sex. That was it. Um, but yeah, so so I am not very decent at dating anymore to say the least um, uh, it's like I'm relearning how to date now which is freaking crazy uh, but yeah so so yeah anyway about mm, I don't know maybe 20 minutes no it was longer than that it was maybe an hour no, a little bit longer than an hour because I was starting to get kind of tipsy I wasn't drunk though because you know I was an alcoholic so um he starts talking about like the Bible and like he starts talking about this story about how Jesus healed some lepers or whatever. Now that hit home for me because for me, like at my lowest points, like I always felt like I was like a social leper. And like, that's what I told, well, I didn't tell anybody that part. Like I, I felt like I was just like a social leper and just like nobody really wanted to be around me, especially when I was drinking, but you know, whatever I, I cared more about the alcohol anyway. So, like, when he started telling me about that, I was like, man, like, that's actually really awesome that, you know, Jesus, like, healed these dudes or whatever. Like, because for the longest time in my life, like, I felt like, even when I was a kid, like, you know, when I say kid, I mean teenager, like 13, 14, I always felt like not just an outcast, but like something was wrong with me. 
like for real, like something was legit wrong with me. That's what I thought for the longest time. And um, I just f felt like a leper, like I had leprosy or something. Or like, you know that movie, like Lord of the Rings, like the Schmeagle dude, or is that his name? Like the precious dude, precious. Like that's how I, I felt like I was, like just some monster or something, you know what I mean? Like I was just some monster that everybody hated to be around and I should just go in a cave and live alone and whatever, right? Like, that's how I felt. And so I didn't ever tell anybody that, though, right? So so when he told me that story about Jesus, like, healing, you know, the lepers and all that, I was like, wow, man, that's actually crazy. Like, it's really beautiful, right? And, um, you know, we started talking about other things as well, about, like, I, I remember, you know, asking him, like, if you, if you think that, oh, I asked him, basically, if there was a button that could basically start everything all over again like you'd wipe out everybody right but it's a possibility that you know life could start again would you push it he said no and I was like I said yes I was like hell yeah push that button because you know look at how messed up everything is you know like if if we start it all over there's a chance everything could be better right of course I didn't really understand what the actual scenario meant but at the time I was just thinking oh well it's a chance everything could be better. Um, so, yeah. Like, and as he's talking to me about Jesus and, like, all these things, right? Like, there were weird things started to happen that I didn't tell him. And by weird, I mean really weird. Like, like really, really weird stuff. Um, and I, I can't really put it into words without sounding crazy. Like, if I tell you this, you're probably going to think this dude is crazy because he was drunk. Drunk doesn't do this to you, all right? Like, even a drunk person would probably freak out. And I wasn't really that drunk either. I only had, like, maybe three or four beers. So, like, literally, I can't describe this any other way than saying, like, time literally started to feel weird. Which makes no sense when you hear that, right? Like, how the hell does time feel weird? Like, listen, time literally... This guy was sitting there talking to me. I'm sitting here like this, drinking my beer, trying to zone out or whatever. And like, it felt like he was talking for an hour all of a sudden. And like, I was like looking at my beer and I'm like, what the heck is this? And like, then, then he was still talking, but, but there wasn't any sound. And we were at a bar and it was, it was like a big, like really fancy, like, I don't know. He's like super fancy, like upscale dude or whatever. Um, but so he took me to a place that I probably would never go. No, I haven't been back ever. But so like this bar is like super kind of fancy-ish or whatever. Like, uh, and it was loud. It was really loud. But but all of a sudden, like everything, I couldn't hear anything. And I'm not deaf or anything like that. I couldn't hear anything. And then like I started freaking out. I, I you know I, I I'm good at freaking out and not telling anybody. You know so like. I'm sitting here like drinking. I'm like, what is going on? And like, I look over like out the corner of my eye. Well, it was that way actually. Um, Cause he was sitting like right here to my right and the bar stool next to me. And I'm like, I'm like, holy crap. He's still talking. I didn't say that, but I thought it. I was like, he's still talking. Why can't I freaking hear him though? Terrifying. This was actually super scary, right? Super scary. I didn't know what to think of it. And I'm just like, I'm like, uh, and then eventually it stopped and I was like, all right, like I was just tripping probably. Right. So we ended up leaving there or whatever. I still want to drink more. I end up going and, uh, I go to a bar that I usually go to like my regular place or whatever, which is quite a drive from where we just were. But you know, he went home or whatever. So I was like, dude, like I usually drink to like two, three, four in the morning, you know, like until I'm either a brown dart or black dot, either one. Um, so yeah, not a very good habit. So I go to that bar or whatever, and on the way there, I swear, this is crazy. So I'm driving down this street, right, and it's dark as hell, like, and it's um, it's like a side street. And I still remember this, like, perf like, it's so crazy. So I'm driving, I'm doing maybe a little bit over. So, like, the speed limit's like 45. I'm doing, like, maybe, like, eh, not quite 55, but close to it. So I'm on the left-hand lane, and, like, the streets are kind of narrow already. I'm in the left-hand lane. There's another van over here on the right-hand lane, right? And uh, I'm just driving, minding my own business, drunk, but not like not like blacked out yet. I wasn't drunk enough, you know? I wasn't drunk enough yet. 
Like I, like I said, I had a real drinking problem. So I was drunk, but not drunk enough. I was still functioning. So that's why I was driving. Don't do that, by the way. I'm not endorsing this in any way. But when you have a real problem like how I had, um, like that, I'm just telling the story. I'm being honest. Um, and all of a sudden, this van that's in the right-hand lane just shoots over into my lane for no reason. And like I slam on the brakes without even like thinking about it. And I didn't hit it. I didn't hit the van or anything like that. And I'm just like, I'm just like, what the hell was that? And uh, and I'm like, whoa. Somehow I dodged that because I didn't really have any reaction time to it. And I'm intoxicated. By all intents and purposes, I probably should have hit that van. But somehow I didn't. So that was the one of the weird things. Um, I get to the bar and, uh, you know, I sit down or whatever. And I'm drinking, finish the beer. And some more weird stuff kind of started happening or whatever. Like, this time, no, it was a little bit different, right? And if you're a guy, especially a guy that's not, like, I'm not, like, ugly, but I'm not, like, super attractive, you know what I mean? I'm not, like, freaking, you know, some hot dude where chicks are like, yeah. So I'm sitting there. I got my drink. I just finished it or whatever. And then the bartender asked me if I want another drink. I'm like, that's a stupid question. Of course I do, right? Of course. Um, and... She she brings it up to me, and she slaps it down, and she's like, oh, don't worry about it. Um, that lady over there paid for it. Didn't know the lady at all. She's like, uh, and um, I'm like, okay, uh, thanks. You know, thanks for the free beer, lady. Uh, so I drink it, right? And I, yeah. And then she comes back, the bartender comes back and asks me again, like, you know, after I finish that beer. She's like, do you want another one? I'm like, Yes. Yes, I do. And these were like big, tall boys, right? Like drafts. Like these were big ones. Like, so I'm like, yes, I do. So each one of those is probably like two and a half beers, maybe three. Um, I'm like, yes, yes, I do. She slaps it down. She's like, oh, don't worry about this. I paid for it. The bartender. And I'm like, what? So, so first off, like if... I just want to break this down. So, like, for some of you, this probably may not... And when I say some of you, I know there's probably not going to be very many people watching this. Um, but for most people, the average guy, right, who isn't, you know, Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling or some, like, super, like... What's that dude who plays Thor? Um, I know chicks, like, love that guy, but I don't know his name, so whatever. But, so, unless you're, like, a wicked, wicked hot dude, ain't no girl buying you no drink, let alone the bartender, Right? So, like, this happened. This has never happened to me before. Like, and I'm sitting here like, what the hell is going on, dude? Like, why is all this weird stuff happening all of a sudden? And, like, it really freaked me out. Anyway, uh, and we're getting to the part where, you know, I'm sure people really want to know. But there were these weird things happening that night. And I'm just like, I'm like, what is all this? I'm like, I got to go home. Like, after that one... Because that's never happened to me before. I've actually never had anybody buy me two drinks, let alone one drink, by or two drinks by two different people that I don't know. I'm like, uh, what? So this was really weird, right? So end up getting home, go to sleep. I'm sitting here thinking like, wow, what a weird day. You know, that dude that I work with that I... I was like, he's freaking crazy. I don't really know what to say to talk him out of this stuff. But my mind kept going back to, you know, a lot of things that he was talking about with Jesus and, you know, how Jesus helped these people and all these sort of things, right? And I'm like, I'm like that is kind of cool, though, you know? I'm like, that's cool. I'm like, I, I might not mess with him anymore about God. I'm starting to tear up. <sighs> Try not to. And that's how you know it's getting real. But, yeah, so um, I go to sleep, wake up, like, super early. Like, I, I went to bed at, like, maybe midnight. No, 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 no. It was, like, 2, actually. 2.30-ish, maybe 3. I went to sleep like hella early or hella late, right? But then I woke up literally like maybe an hour later completely sober. And like, I mean completely sober, dead sober. Like I was expecting to wake up with like, I don't know about, I don't know, maybe a mild hangover-ish or like kind of still feeling tipsy because I probably had like uh, close to 12 drinks total, which... I mean, for me, that's not, like, my max or whatever, but it's enough to where, you know, with that little amount of sleep and that amount of time, you can expect to wake up and still feel it because it was, like, maybe two hours. I wake up and, oh, God, I don't even know how to describe this. 
So I'm watching Netflix. I'm watching Archer. I was like, I'll just fall asleep to Archer. And, like, I'm looking at the corner of a wall or something. And, like, I'm like, this was so weird. What a weird day, you know? And I was like, man, I just need to go to sleep. Can't sleep, though. Couldn't go to sleep. Even though I was, I thought I was tired, but I woke up completely sober, like completely awake even. And it was weird for me because normally, even though I had been drinking for such a long time in my life, like normally I don't just wake up and be sober like that, especially with beer. Like maybe with like some heart, heart alcohol, I, I would still be like, I would still feel something though. So like I'm sitting there looking at the wall, like listening to Archer was the episode I already seen because I mean, obviously, you know, I watched all of them already. And, yeah, like, so how to describe this? I'm not good at telling the story, but I'm trying. So, I felt this heat on my head. Really, really hot. Really, really hot heat. And I thought, like, maybe I should take some Tylenol or something like that. Like, maybe, like, it was, it was really, really hot. And um, I felt like this pressure on my head. <laughs> like, And at first it wasn't too bad. Like it just felt kind of like uh, maybe like beginning symptoms of like a headache or something like that. But then it wasn't a headache at all. Like it just it kept getting hotter and hotter. And then like I felt more and more pressure like right here or whatever. And I was like and then in, like all around my head. Right. And I'm just like, man, like what is going on? I'm like, am I having a stroke right now? Because, like, it was getting more and more intense. I'm like, man, I, I just got to, like, chill. I probably ain't having no stroke. Like, I just need to relax, you know? So I was just sitting there, like, thinking about things, thinking about my life and, you know, my decisions. And I'm thinking about, you know, choices in general, I guess, would be the easiest way to put it. You know, like... You know, why I got into philosophy and, you know, and almost immediately, like, the questions that I had answers to, or the questions that I, I was looking for answers were, like, coming up in my mind like that. I'm like, man, like, why did I even get into philosophy? And then I was like, oh, yeah, well, it's because, you know, your dad was such a Christian or whatever, and you wanted to disprove him. So you started, you know, looking for ways to do that without going to, you know, through the same things that he did, which... You know, going through the Bible or religious and all, all those types of things. So I was trying to disprove him, you know, from a very young age because I had such a resentment towards my my father. And I was like, wow, that's really weird. Like, how did I come to that conclusion all of a sudden? That's weird. And then I was like, man, like, what was something else that was really freak? I'm like, man, like, why are, you know, why are we so freaking messed up? Like, what all is going on, you know? And like almost immediately like there was this answer about I'm not going to share that with you because in all honesty if I told you it, it probably wouldn't make any sense in all honesty and even the question that I just said it was kind of one of those meaning to life things but I've noticed no matter who I tell it to the answer that I got when I asked for it it people people don't really want to hear it. <laughs> like and that was the other part and I was like I was like man like so when the meaning of the life thing or my life or purpose, whatever you want to call it, when that question came up, I was like, man, like if it's if it's like that, like why why are we so confused? Why are we, you know, trying to do all these things all the time to like, you know, make ourselves out to be so big and whatever? And like basically it was something that said something like, Well, you know, everybody always thinks that a simple answer means that it's wrong, that the bigger the answer is to whatever question, the more important it becomes, right? And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And, and that's when I started to realize something else was going on because I had never thought anything like that before in my life, ever. Like, I had never thought like, oh, well. And I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who probably have been like, oh, that's not really that big of a deal. Listen, like, let me put this in perspective, all right? So for you, I don't know what your thoughts are in your life, right? Like, for me, a lot of the times, like a lot of the thoughts that I was having, you know, for most of my life was always introspective, you know, reflective of, you know, me, like what all is going on for me? Why is it? Why does the world look this way to me? You know, all those types of things. Right. So when I start hearing things like, oh, well, you know, it's because people don't like 
people want to have a complicated answer because they think that something being more complex or to them being more complex makes it more true or more more real when in reality like a simple question a simple answer i should say is is it doesn't make it any greater or worse. Like if two plus two equals four, it doesn't matter if you say, if you go through a big long equation to get to the four, like at the end of the day, if two plus two equals four, then okay, like it equals four. We don't have to go and do extra steps and present all these extra, you know, axioms to try to make four, two plus two equal four sound cooler or more important, right? So like that's one of those perspective things. And then like almost just as soon as I... I started thinking like that. That's when I realized like the voice that I was hearing and it wasn't really a voice. I say voice, but it wasn't a voice. It was more like it was more like a so think about a movie but without an actual sound, but at the same time it was almost like you knew what was going on like being said to you in through the movie or whatever. Like when you watch the movie, you know what's what they're actually saying or doing or what's being said even without sound to it that makes sense it probably doesn't people are probably like oh my god this guy's insane that's fine um and that's when like that's when i was like yo like wait a minute i've never thought anything like this before and i was like i was like if i could if i could get help if i could you know figure out how to help myself or any of us could for that matter if anybody could figure out how to help themselves like wouldn't they already do it like and it's like man that's actually kind of weird isn't it you know, like, you know, all these people who study psychology and philosophy, and yet they still have problems too, right? It's not like all of it goes away because they know more. And it's like, if if I personally knew how to help myself, wouldn't I already be able to do that? And, and I'm like, man, that's really weird. And uh, that's when, like, I was like, man, like, is, is this me talking? Because this doesn't sound like me anymore. This doesn't sound like something that I ever think. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, Garrett was talking about God and all this stuff. Like, I'm like, is this God talking to me? Like, I swear, like, this is me thinking. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you guys what I'm thinking when I'm saying these things. I'm like, is this God talking to me right now? And like, in that moment, right there, that's when it got super intense and vivid. And um, so, yeah, like, there were so many things. And it felt like hours and hours and hours. And I mean... It was at least an hour, but it felt like such a long time where it was me asking a question about something and immediately getting a response, but in a way that was like a picture, but it, I understood. Like, it showed how I self-sabotage and self-destruct. Like, and I shared this with my friend too. Like, God showed me that, you know, when I meet anybody, man, woman, whatever, like one of the first things that I do, you know, I'll befriend them and, you know, whatever come to them as an equal but then shortly after I'll say hey by the way if you ever want to hurt me here you go like here are all my weak points like I was like using like um, a dagger to point to him like you can stab me here 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 I know that sounds funny right but it's all just a metaphor um, basically well actually that's not even a metaphor that's a very very real visual representation of what I was doing but people weren't actually stabbing me with their daggers but you know they were like wow like you know, it's it's one of those things where if somebody ever really wants to hurt you, you tell them exactly how to do it. Um, so, yeah, like I wouldn't come to somebody like as an equal or anything like that. I would come already expecting to be hurt by them. But also I give them a blueprint on how to hurt me. I, I wasn't aware of this. Like and I didn't I, even though I was in the psychology, I didn't actually ever attend any therapy or anything like that. Like, you know, I went to AA for a little while, but that's completely different than actually like going to therapy with, you know, a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Um, so yeah, like it showed me that and I was like, wow, like I was never aware of that. It showed me how, like when I say it, I'm saying God, like God showed me like how I could get on the internet, for example. And literally I wasn't even in control sometimes. Like I would like start fights with people or say mean things to people over the internet and I wasn't in control, like, and um, it almost looked like a different version of me, I guess, like a darker, weirder, shadowy version of me or something like that. It was really weird. Um, and little by little, it showed me that that shadowy part became more and more me because 
basically I allowed it to, I enabled it to. And um, it makes sense though, because so at that point in time, I was struggling with crippling anxiety, like crippling. It was bad. I just thought it was anxiety. So it didn't start off that way, but there was this feeling right here. So I'm going to tell you about anxiety for me. So I would have these things like, and it felt like something was right here and it would just grip and clench and it felt like my whole body just tightened up. So like, for instance, most people, you know, say you want to talk to a girl, right? Maybe you feel a little nervous or whatever, but me, uh, -uh. so like towards the end there, like I would just clamp up like I would just go like this and like I'd be unable to move and I'd be a prisoner right there right like I'd be a prisoner I'd be in, like in my mind I'm like man why can't I say anything why can't I speak like what the hell's going on and this would happen all the time and I'm talking about just in day-to-day -day stuff like people would talk to me and I just like and I was like man what is this because it wasn't always like that but progressively it got worse and worse and worse to the point where it was like that where you know I was just I felt like a prisoner basically and I, I just thought well you know I got to get like some sort of drugs that was also one of the reasons why I started using more and more alcohol because the more drunk I got the easier it was to ignore that sort of feeling but I mean then other there's other problems to that right like that's not a good solution so yeah like God showed me that like God showed me all these things that honestly like there's so many things in this life, in this world, that I wasn't really aware of. And at the end of everything, God told me that basically, you know, like, um, so basically he said that I was like a candle burning and I was trying to, I was trying to hold on even though there was like uh, all this like, it was, it's a picture. So it's hard to describe. So like, he showed me like I was basically getting my ass kicked is the nice way of putting it. And like, you know, I was burning out basically. I, if, like if I were a candle, if a candle that was burning, I was basically like burning out or whatever. And essentially like, you know, because I was trying to do all these things on my own, like a person can't stop the wind from blowing, obviously. Like, you know, none of us can stop those sort of things. So, like, I was always under attack by all these things that I can't actually stop. You know what I mean? Like, and I, did, I didn't know how to deal with these things. And, um, let's see, how to put this. Well, he told me that he was going to keep me safe, which is the be a really cool part. But he also told me that, you know, uh, so basically he said that my cup was full with all the wrong things. And that I needed to, I needed to be emptied again before I could be filled. And that might sound weird to people. It's not sexual or anything like that. Um, I was, I was full of things that I didn't actually need. I was full of things of the world that I thought was right. And that's when, that's when something really cool happened because he said he wanted me to know that it wasn't just some sort of dream or drunken thing or whatever and that's when like all I can say is that same sort of pressure that I felt that was tints me up like this or whatever like all of a sudden I felt I felt it just like it, it's so crazy and I saw a vision or an image I guess a vision is probably the better way of putting it because I didn't see it in a physical part but I saw like all this dark stuff like being pulled out of me all these like I kind of would say they look like bugs in all honesty they look like a whole bunch of little freaking bugs but like flies but flies that actually like aren't there for you know what flies are normally there for it was something else and it was like a whole swarm of these things like pull out of me and I felt it like I'm not joking like literally felt it and he pulls all this stuff out of me right and then like I just feel something else though something like like come and come like in like in me I don't know what else to say it like it sounds crazy but I felt something else like resting right here and like go inside me 
and this fire, like this super, super intense fire. And my chest is just like pulsating, pulsating, pulsating. And I'm just like, holy crap. I'm like, you know, I was going to call for an ambulance or something like that because I thought I was freaking out. Like I thought I was dying. And literally, I, I thought I was like when he was pulling all that out of me, like I thought I was dying, like straight up. But then like all this fire was in me all of a sudden and like it's gosh how can I put this if you made it this far good job but how can I put this the best high you've ever had in your life if you've ever been high like it was something so surreal it was something so amazing that felt great my perspective changed my thought changed like all the things that I used to think about, I wasn't thinking about anymore. Like the way I saw the world, you know, I went outside. The world looked so bright, so beautiful. Before it always looked like some sort of gloomy place to me or whatever. Like all I ever saw was how cruel the world could be. Like the first thing I saw when I walked out of my apartment was like these trees and like this light shining off of it. And like I saw right there, I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's amazing. Like, I just looked around, and I'm like, oh, my God. And, like, my chest is just pulsating, just fire, fire, pulsating, pulsating, pulsating. And, like, my head's still on fire. And then I feel this, like, euphoric feeling just wash over my head, my whole body, just intense. I mean, like, super intense. And just so you know, this lasted for months. Like, this wasn't something that lasted for a day and went away. Like, this was literally months of this feeling, and it was amazing. Like, God is amazing. And the first thing I wanted to do was just talk to anybody. I wanted to connect with anybody because for my whole life, I had been shut in. You know what I mean? I had been trying to withdraw from people. I've been trying to alienate. It's like I've been trying to escape from people and like seclude myself from people because, you know, people were the enemy to me, you know? And like the first, I, I, I didn't care about connecting with people. I just wanted them to leave me alone. But the first thing I wanted to do after, you know, God came in to my life was I just wanted to connect to somebody. I just wanted to say hi to somebody. That was it. Because I realized what our lives really are because what God actually showed me. And literally the first person I saw, like I was actually walking to the gas station because I was like, man, I need to get a soda after this. Like, and it was like early in the morning. Like, that's how I know like this lasted for a while because it like... Like I said, I might have woke up at like four or something like that, but I didn't actually go to the gas station, which is just around the corner from where I was staying. I didn't even go there till like maybe like eight or nine. So like this was not like a short thing that happened. And um, so, yeah, like I I go to I, I'm going walking to the gas station. And just so everybody knows, I didn't script this or anything like I haven't written everything down. Like I'm going straight from memory. That's why it seems like, oh, man, he's talking kind of weird. I should have wrote it down, buddy. Get a script. Like, I, w I just wanted to be real with it. But the first thing I wanted to do was connect. And I see this lady who's, like, she's an older lady. Like, really, really older lady. And uh, she's taking out her trash. And, like, I feel like... And I feel like it was God, by the way. Like, I feel the Holy Spirit just say, like, hey, you should help her with her trash, dude. He didn't say dude. Like, I'm feeling that part in. But I was like, okay. I'd never done that before, just so you know. I was a pretty selfish person. So I asked her, I'm like, I'm like, hey miss, do you want me to do you want me to take uh, your trash for you and throw it away? And she's like, Oh yeah, great. I'm like, I can't do her voice or whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, awesome, all right, cool. And like I'm smiling about everything. Like before I was like super gloomy all the time. And like I'm just smiling, you know? Because I was so happy. I, I am happy. And uh she's like, Oh, thank you so much. She's just, and I'm like, Oh yeah, no worries, no worries. And she's like, oh, we're doing great, right? We're just wiggling along in life, and we're going to do okay. And I was like, I was like, heck yeah. Like, that's awesome. Like, like at that time, at that moment in my life, I was just like, man, that's crazy. Like, that has to be. And just so you guys know, like, I have, I'm, I'm excluding a lot of other things that happen in that event, like, that with God. Because, like I said, like, I feel like a lot of the stuff there are things that, I'm not saying necessary just for me, but I'm saying it's one of those things where, so like when Jesus actually spoke to um, the woman at the well, I believe the first, yeah, when he spoke to the woman at the well, like she comes back from the well and she's like, dude, I met this guy who told me everything about myself and I didn't even know it. So it was like that. And like I said, I wasn't Christian at, it, at all. Like I didn't know any scriptures or anything, but that's exactly what happened to me. 
Like, he told me everything about myself, things that I didn't even know about myself. And he also told me who I actually was and what, I, what my purpose actually was. And so here's the thing. There are many things in this life that can confuse us and make us feel like we need to change and become something else. And that's exactly what I was feeding for a very, very long time. I thought that I needed to be... I needed to be like, you know, the guy who's like, doesn't care about women, like the player sort of dude, but like the cool sort of player. Like there were all these dudes or whatever that I was like, if I do this and this and this, like how that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, right? Or like, you know, society says that a man should do this, this, and this, and this. Like if I do these things, right? Like then I'm going to be, I'm going to be all right. And because that's what all these different things, that's what worked for them and them and them and them and them. All these people, or at least that's what they say worked. Um, it didn't actually. So, so like, in doing those sort of things, like, we forget who we really are, right? Like, I thought that I was some sort of, like, I don't really know what I thought I was, in all honesty. Like, I didn't think very highly of myself at all. So God showed me like who he made me to be though. He showed me that I was covering up the gifts that I he gave me, which were the compassion and kindness that I have for others. That you know, and I mean, I knew I was an empathetic person when I was younger, but as I got older, I became less and less in tune with those sort of things. And um I mean, now it makes sense though, right? Like it's because I was trying to forget about it basically. I was trying to become somebody else. And in doing that, I I was losing what was making me me and God created me to be a compassionate and kind person to others like those are my greatest traits not pride or whatever I thought like I used to think that I you know I was like man I'm a really prideful person I take a lot of pride in my work like that's what I that's what I thought was my greatest trait like I'm super prideful and I have really good morals which not really I'm I, that's what I thought to think highly of myself but no so when he showed me that, I was like, man, that's crazy, you know, that's crazy. And yeah, I was just so happy, so thankful, you know, because of all that. And then I went through and I read scripture again. I was like, I was like, oh my God, all this makes complete sense. Everything makes sense now. Like I read the Bible and I'm like, oh my God, like this makes sense. Like I totally get it. I know exactly what they're saying. I know exactly why, you know, all these sort of things. And more and more, I just saw, like, you know, how cloudy we can all get in when we get caught up in the wrong things. And we forget. We're really good at forgetting. Like, that was the other thing. Like, God showed me that all of us, not just me, all of us are so good at forgetting and pretending and telling ourselves things that we want to hear because a lot of times we're afraid of, you know, the truth. But we don't need to be afraid of the truth. Like, you know, think about it. Like, if, if you're wrong, what's the worst? Like, and I'm saying this as, like, a way so that people can understand. Like, if you're wrong about the sky being blue, like, if you said the sky was purple and somebody was like, no, it's actually blue. Okay. What's the big deal? Like, maybe you don't know the name of the color. Maybe you don't see it the same way, but the sky is blue to, you know, it is. That's what it is, right? You know, hearing the word no, though, to me and for anybody, for that matter, like hearing the word no a lot of times is such a painful thing to hear that most of us spend a lot of our times like trying not to hear that word because we, we don't like it. We don't we don't want to hear no. So we we start off doing one thing so that we don't hear no or we adopt a sort certain set of thoughts. And so, you know, to protect ourselves from hearing that word no and it kind of snowballs really quick, you know? Like, once you start doing these sort of things, it snowballs insanely fast, and then the years go by, and you've become a completely different person, all because it all started because you don't want to hear the word no. But because you don't like hearing that word, you turned into something completely different so far away, and you actually lost sight of what was what, what that really was. And it's one of those prideful things where where you took so much pride in your own self and your own feelings that you said, hey, I, I don't care about hearing the word no anymore. I'll do anything not to hear that. And even if it means, even if it means denying what's true. And that's true for all of us. And that's 
part of the reason why I'm so thankful to God because, you know, I never thought that God would save me, you know? When people talk about being saved, it's a very, very real thing. And born again, these are very real things. Like the scene, the thing that I'm describing to you is where I was born again, right? And it's real. It's it's where you persp- it's where God came into your life and changed your perspective on everything. It's not about like going to church is great. It's great about learning and connecting with others. But connecting with God is something that's between you and Him, and. I feel like that's the thing that's that he really showed me. Like, think of the Bible as kind of a history lesson. It's not so much a history of us, but it's a history of God. It's a history of God and how he's interacted with us just just so we don't forget. <laughs> just so we don't forget who he is and what he made us for. And, you know, people might hear this and they'll think it's crazy or they may agree. I don't know. I don't know what you're going through or where you are in your life. Um, And I know how easy it can be to get caught up in in all the wrong things. Like, even when it seems like it's right. Like, that's the weird thing. Like, when you're doing something wrong, you have ways of justifying what's wrong to make it seem right or less, less wrong, you know? Like, what was it? Like, one of the things that... I found out is like murderers, for example. Just, you know, I've never been a murderer. I'm using this as an example so that to the extreme to like kind of like put everything in perspective. Like there are murderers out there who find ways. Like, have you seen Dexter ever, the TV show that was on Showtime? So there are murderers out there who actually rank, you know, they're like, well, this murderer does this. So I'm above him because I do it this way, though. I only murder people who murder others, right? So they try to justify the bad thing they're, they're doing to try to make it feel like what they're doing is just or right or something like that. At the end of the day, though, you're still a murderer, right? So I, I, that's a super extreme example. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just using that as an example so people would know and understand like how easy it can be to like prop ourselves up. You know, like we're so quick to prop, prop ourselves up like even if we're doing the same thing as somebody else. And we're so easily, we so quickly forget like what it is that we're doing if it means that we can single somebody else out to to push them down and boast ourselves up. Now, those sort of things, like they might not seem malicious or whatever, but it's one of those things where all of us are not just capable of it, but we're probably actively doing it I don't want to say daily, but often, often. And I mean, you can go talk to anybody and I'm sure there's going to, they're eventually going to say something that's similar to that where they're trying to push themselves up and bring somebody else down, right? Um, And it's just one of those things where we keep forgetting who we are. We keep on trying to be an image of what we think we want others to see in us. And that's the dangerous part in all this, right? Like, like imagine if you're constantly trying to get inside somebody else's head to understand how they view you. It's impossible. You're not psychic, right? Like, even if you asked them to write it down, like, would they be completely honest with you? Who knows? But we're not psychic. But there's this voice in all of us that's always telling us to be a certain way. Like, I have to do this for this i have to look this certain way i have to be this certain image for this and that's one of those things like that's that that's that no thing that turns you into something else right that voice specifically the one that tells you that you have to be something else the thing that tells you you have to try to look a certain way or these people right here are looking at you a certain way so you have to look this way i know that sounds weird because i'm not i'm not like articulating this in the most like I don't know, scientific way, I guess, grammarly cor- correct way. Um, I'm using this because I'm just a regular dude, right? Like, I'm not anything. I'm not anybody. I'm just a regular guy. Um, so, you know, like I said, this isn't scripted. I'm not reading anything right now. I'm just going off of memory straight up. And, you know, obviously I've asked you know, God to help me speak. And sometimes you can get a little tongue twisted when you're trying to articulate so many different things because it's such an important thing that I feel like 
we have a way of just forgetting or taking things and making it seem a lot less than they really are. Like there are people, and here's the other thing. When God came into my life, I said, oh my God, like I've been blind for a really long time. Like how, how long has, has all this God stuff been going on and I didn't notice it? Like that was the thing that was most shocking to me. Like I had lived my whole life and it felt like there was so much of life that I didn't understand because to me the world looked a certain way. I'm like, dude, like how long has all this God stuff been going on? Like is all the, uh, have all these people actually known that God is actually real? And, you know, when they tell me this, I was just like super dismissive or judgmental because I thought they were stupid. Like it is, has this all been going on and I just didn't understand it? And that's when I understood what being blind meant. Be being blind truly means like you are blind. You are honestly not trying to see any of it. And when I saw it, I was just like, it's a whole different world. A whole, th everything's different. Everything. And uh, yeah, like when you're caught up in your own arrogance of things, like you have a way of putting things keeping things in your path that you want to see you know what i mean like if you only want to see if you only want to see you know how good you are you're going to put people around you that think you're good right if you only are interested in drinking you're only going to put people around you who like to drink even if they don't like you then you guys can still drink together and you'll probably be all right same thing with drugs drugs is a big connection thing like I didn't realize this when I was younger, but as I got older, I noticed as, you know, me and the friends that I used to hang out with, even childhood friends, like, we don't really hang out anymore because, you know, they still like drugs and I don't. You know, they have friends who like doing drugs and I don't, right? Like, I drink, but I, I didn't really like doing drugs. I didn't, it, It's just one of those things where we have a really selfish way of keeping things around us that we like seeing. And, uh, yeah, that's... That's one of those things about our lives that it's like we don't fully understand it when we're in it. And it's only when somebody else really shines a light on it where you actually get it. And uh, yeah, so that was about an hour of me talking right there. I'm not going to break this up, I don't think. I think I'm just going to let this be one big thing. Um, but yeah, my name's John. Hi. I uh, So... I'm not saying everything's been perfect after that, but I am saying that if there's anybody out there who's watching this and like you're wondering if God is real, he is. It's all true. If you're wondering if, you know, the people coming to your door or whatever Christian person, if you're if you hear a voice in your head that's telling you to dismiss those people or they're stupid or anything like that i'm going to tell you right now like that negativity that voice right there that voice is lying to you it's lying to you because it wants to keep you from the truth and the truth is like you're in a you've forgotten basically you forgot who you were a long long time ago and the one person who can help you remember, who not just help you remember, the one person who can help you remember is God. All of us want to know him. And that voice in your head that tells you that the Christians are the bad people and Jesus isn't real and all these things, that voice in your head, that's the bad person. That's the actual bad person. That's the enemy. And that's the thing that wants to keep you in the, you know, from learning what that truth is. Like that whole no thing and you become somebody else. It wants you to become somebody else. It wants you to forget who you are. And that's what I did. I forgot who I was for a very, very long time. And yeah, I, I'm saying this because, you know, I'm a regular person. I'm not rich and I'm not, you know, well off or anything like that. Um, and I don't get anything out of this. Like, I'm not searching for views on YouTube or anything like that. Like, if you look at my channels, I, I, I barely upload. I don't have social media. Um, I don't care about that, really. I figured with all the things going on in this world, you know, it can be easy to get trapped in the dark. It can be easy to see the world for, to just see the negative, you know? Like, it's just like if you... So here's another thing that God showed me, right? 
And this was this is this all goes back to that whole like arrogance thing and pride. Even though when you're in it, you probably don't think you are, but you absolutely are. So say for instance. Say, for instance, there's this huge picture, bigger than you've ever seen in your life, a painting. And I'm putting this out so you can understand, like, what I was showed. Um, but a huge, huge painting. It's huge. It's massive. It's so... It's huge. Like, you can't even actually see it all. Uh, but, in your mind, you say, well, I can't see everything right there. But I can see this part right here of this a gigantic picture, this gigantic painting, right? So if I if I can learn this part in this picture, painting, whatever you want to call it, right here, and memorize all this right here, then that means that I know it better than everybody else. Now, that's crazy, right? <laughs> it's crazy to say that, but... That same premise holds true for all of our lives. We all focus on certain things that we want to say that we know better than everybody else. And just so you know, I'm not saying that I know God or the Bible or anything better than anybody. Like, this isn't even a competition. Like, that's the other part. Like, none of this is a competition. Um, I'm saying this because at the end of the day, we're all a family. We all are. Um, but it's God that connects us. Like, the whole love your neighbor um, love God, love people. So the reason why it's so important to really understand, without God, you don't have any reason to love anybody, not even yourself. Like, why should you, right? Like, we've all been brought up to understand that, you know, you get in this world what you can, can take, right? Like, we all hear stories about Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or all these millionaires going out do things or you know even if it's even before them you know we hear about you know the ex mcdonald's exec who worked from i don't know the fry cook up to an owner or something like that we all hear about all these things right so if it's all about trying to trying to do that then that would mean that everybody else everybody in the world is actually against you right because they're all trying to do the same thing they're all trying to get money or be an exec or you know if you do these things you get enough money then you can be happy right you get a family because you know people like being around people with money because they can buy things um men women alike right people like having nice things um so yeah it's it's just like one of those things where where without god we are we are really shown who we really, not who we really are, but who we think we should be. But it's only with God do we learn who we really are. And then from that, we can actually learn to love others. And loving others with God is actually, it's actually really easy. Like once God is there, like loving other people feels so much simpler. Because you see them in a way that maybe they don't even see themselves, you know? Like you see them in their most purest way. You see everything in its most purest way. And everything just makes so much sense. And it's like, man, like, we should all just be helping each other. Like, we should all just be a family, like one big family. That's what we are. But without him, like, we're not. We're foes. We're enemies. So, yeah. Uh, I guess that's going to do it right there. I could probably keep ranting in all honesty, but it's probably been over an hour or two, right? I doubt many people will watch this all the way through, let alone, because I'm not going to advertise this or anything like that. But I just figured, hey, you know, I've given my testimony to, I don't know, most people anyway. And I'm like, yo, like the internet's here. Like, why shouldn't I put this out on the internet? You know? So yeah, that was all the thing. that Because there is so many things out there telling you God isn't real and when you're bombarded with that many advertisements that say God ain't real like it's kind of hard to not believe it right like if all the advertisements you saw said McDonald's was the best restaurant ever like I mean if you didn't see anything else you'd say okay it must be true because everybody else says it right like all these other ads say it and that's the other thing like popular opinion is not right like just because popular opinion says it's right doesn't mean it is uh, but 
I know there's going to be people like, no way, that's right, man. Like, no, dude. Like, if everybody says that 2 plus 2 equals 5, it doesn't matter if a million people say it or a hundred million people say it. It still doesn't mean it's right. Like, and that's kind of what's going on right now in this world. People believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5. And it's spreading. Like, that same notion is spreading. And now, it, it, it's so weird watching this, you know, now, as somebody who's known, who knows God and it's so crazy. Anyway, I'm saying this because God is real. God help me. God can help you too. And all you have to do is be willing to say, I don't know everything. I don't. I don't know everything. I do need help. And I do want to know you. Like, he knows our heart. He knows what you really need and want. Even if you aren't willing to tell other people that. He knows everything. It's scary, but it's also amazing. It's, he's so amazing. And I know I say he. It's not really a he, technically. But it's easier for us as humans to understand that when you put a gender on it. Like, God is something more than man or woman. And uh, I'm saying this because I care. And I'm not going to cry. And deep down, God wants to know you. And you want to know and. He's, his arms are open to everybody, just so you know. And nobody's ever too far gone. And that's going to do it. And I'm going to end it there. And amen. Bye.